Hi, welcome to today's community chat. We are going to speak with the city of Norfolk about the Child Abuse Prevention Month and events they have going on annually. Um, you're going to see some B-roll on the screen in just a minute of previous events and other uh, pinwheel gardens, which you'll hear about uh, from around the area. So I'm going to bring Darlene Smith on, who is with the city of Norfolk. She is an associate director for individual and family services with the Norfolk Department of Human Services. So Darlene, thank you so much much for spending time with us today to talk about this month and also the events that you all have going on in Norfolk um, tomorrow. So if you could, I mean, please introduce yourself and tell us, you know, what your role is. Sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Darlene Smith and I'm the Associate Director of Individual and City of Norfolk gathers in order to celebrate families and children. We do that by planting a pinwheel garden at our city hall downtown. And the pinwheel that you see, um, it denotes playfulness. And every child, no matter where, deserves to have a safe environment where they can learn, play, and feel safe. And a part of us planting the pinwheel garden is to show our togetherness in our support of children and families. Thank you. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And people are seeing, you know, the pinwheels right here on the screen, and they will be able to see them in Norfolk um, starting tomorrow. Um, you know, first, I wanted to, you know, maybe get into the plans for tomorrow, and then we can talk, you know, larger about maybe what the city does to keep kids safe, and then also how the community can help. But can you start just by telling us about the day tomorrow and some of the plans that are, you know, set and where the community can join or come into those? Sure. Our day tomorrow will include a community walk from our Norfolk Department of Human Services building in downtown Norfolk, 741 Monticelli, Monticello Avenue. And we will be walking together, not only with employees and staff of our department, but also from with people that we partner with in the community, such as our law enforcement and um, other partners um, that provide services to our family. We're walking together to show our togetherness for children and families. We will be meeting at the, our city hall, which is um, downtown Norfolk, in order to plant our pinwheels in our garden in front of our city hall building. And, you know, as far as people are concerned, can they, you know, just join you all for the walk portion? Can they stay and be a part of the ceremony and, and planting of the pinwheels? Actually, people, anyone is welcome to walk with us um, because we know it takes a community in order to help prevent child abuse and neglect. So we welcome anyone who would like to walk with us. Or if anyone would like to meet us at our city hall, please do so as well. We'll be meeting there uh, approximately 1 o'clock p.m. on tomorrow. Okay, great. And then they can get more information about, you know, maybe some of the resources and, and larger plans that you all have in the city of Norfolk for those uh, prevention resources? Yes. Um, we will have resources available. Yeah. Great. And, um, you know, I wanted to talk, you know, the problem here, and just so people know, because viewers might not know, how prevalent you know this problem is in our community and across you know the united states and and i was reading somewhere at least this is nationally so i know the numbers are going to be different but the cdc says you know maybe about one in seven children face some sort of abuse um, at least that was as of 2020 you know data but you know can you talk a little bit about you know why this is so important to our community and how how large the problem is Sure. This um, is very important to our community because, as I said before, every child deserves to have a safe environment where they can play freely and they can feel safe and, and grow in a thriving environment. Um, those numbers that you um, just spoke about from 2020 are very similar to those to the data that was presented in 2022. So every child um, deserves a safe environment. Um, and what we do in Norfolk is we provide um, resources to families um, so that they can um, learn about nurturing children because parenting is not easy um, and it can be very tough. Um, and we want families to freely ask for and we provide services 
and resources that can help them learn how to nurture and or enhance already enhance the skills that they have to enhance their parenting um, capabilities so that they can present and create that nurturing environment for children. Right. So you all want to strengthen that family unit and strengthen those parenting skills where you can, where people come to you. That's absolutely correct. We provide resources in order to do that. Um, and when we're talking about strengthening parenting skills, we're, we're talking about understanding child development. Um, we're talking about um, understanding healthy relationships as it pertains to a parent and a child. And then we're also talking about what does a child need in throughout their lifespan in order to um, be able to grow and thrive? And it's not just the family unit that might be able to get help or help a child, right? So you got, you all are asking the community to be a part of this, to watch out for maybe signs or help in the you know scheme of prevention and, and what you can do to help. I mean, can you speak to you know maybe what the community can do to be a part of this? Sure. A any uh, has to be a strong found foundation of um, an authentic relationship between the families and our communities, because this is not something that can be done in silos. Um, it Talking about oh, sorry, Darlene, I think we lost you for um, part of that um, answer there. If you could just start from the beginning, sorry to cut oh, you off. No problem. Um, what I was saying is that um, any any partnership um, that, um, the communities and our families, because there no family um, lives in a silo to help raise children. So when we're talking about community partnerships, we're talking about involving any and everyone who comes in contact with children. That could be any professionals to include teachers, um, our medical professionals, um, child care providers, anyone who is involved with children, helping them to understand what child development is, looking at what the signs of abuse and neglect are, looking at resources that they can provide to families that come to them. Um, in order to help them enhance their parenting capacity. Um, and also looking at just being a resource and um, looking at what children need in order to be nurtured every day. Because as I said before, parenting is not easy. And quite frankly, it can be tough for some of us. Um, so we definitely need to be able to support families and support parents. And that requires a community in order to do that. Right. And you said something important at the beginning, you know, to the effect of, you know, these children don't live in a vacuum, you know, like it's it's the community itself that also is important in addition to the family unit, whether to offer prevention, to offer help, offer help, to offer these resources. I mean, w one thing I did want to bring up and, and we don't have to go into um, too much detail about it because it's, it's more Virginia as a whole, but the social services from Virginia, they said that, you know, educators are a big part of, you know, being there, whether to help kids grow, but then also, you know, to report some incidents, you know, that, that do come up. And so, I mean, they're spending so much time with children throughout the day, the week, the year. I mean, that education piece, I mean, is that particularly important to, you know, helping the community for those teachers to be, you know, involved in that way and be able to report and, and be there for the child? The educational piece is, the educational piece is the teachers and any personnel in our school systems, they see our children more frequently. Um, but not only are we talking about teachers, but we're, we're talking about anyone who has um, contact um, with children. Um, we're talking about um, medical professionals, um, daycare providers. We need all of these folks in Um, signs of abuse and neglect so that we can um, assist families where appropriate and in a timely manner. Um, anytime anyone sees or feels as if a child may be abused or neglected, immediately contact our um, child abuse and neglect hotline so that we can um, initiate uh, services um, for the family. 
And I did want to ask, you know, underreporting, I think, across the board, and maybe that's for, you know, other issues, too, seems to be a problem. Is there anything that that the city of Norfolk suggests to people, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a teacher, whether it's law enforcement, in terms of, you know, going out of your way to report things? I think people might get nervous. You know, what if it's a one-time incident or, or one, you know, I think people do get nervous to report, it seems, from the underreporting, whether that's a relationship problem or just they don't want to be involved. I mean, what do you say to those people who might be timid to report or might want to know the full story? I mean, what do you say to those incidents? For, for those incidents, I would say please feel free to contact us. Um, we have a hotline that is operational 24 hours a day, and every piece of information, whether it's um, whether anyone feels that it's big or small, it helps to assist us in preventing child abuse and neglect. Um, persons who call our hotline can remain anonymous, um, and that way, you know, if there's information that needs to be reported, um, I, you know, we don't want people to feel hesitant about. It helps us in being able to assess situations in order to um, prevent a future incidents of abuse and neglect. And, um, you know, as far as you all said you offered family services, I think a big piece throughout, you know, different studies I've looked at and different um, resources that you all have on your website, talk about this stress and overwhelming stress that, um, you know, parents have, especially, you know, right now where, you know, groceries are expensive, housing is expensive. There's a lot of strain, you know, just in general in the community. I mean, are there resources specifically to helping um, parents maybe manage those resources so that, you know, the stress might not fall on the family and the child? Yes, there are resources, um, and um, anyone can contact our department um, for additional resources um, to assist. Um, we are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, to provide families and resources in order to address those, any scenarios or situations that may cause family stress. often lead or can lead to um, abuse and neglect. Um, therefore, we try to provide services that may eliminate. And if we do not have the information directly, we will link um, families to those resources and that information for them. But the important thing is being out and asking. Um, it does not um, make sense of a parent to ask for help because, as I said before, parenting is tough. And we are here to support parents in everything that they do in order to help create their parenting capabilities and create that nurturing environment for their children. Absolutely. Um, and and at this families. point, you know, I did want to just give you for there's no if there's not a question specifically that maybe, you know, so, um, sort of gave you platform to talk about something that was on on your mind that you wanted to share with everyone, whether it's for tomorrow or for the month or for services in general, you know, is there anything else that that you wanted to highlight? I just wanted to say again that everyone is welcome to participate in our prevention walk planting ceremony on tomorrow and here in the city of Norfolk we know that all children and families are important and we are here to provide the resources and support and information to any and everyone that needs that information so we are definitely here and to support families. Well, thank you, Darlene. And I think for anyone that is able to get out there tomorrow, you know, for part of it or to to go and maybe, um, you know, honor victims or support just by seeing the Pinwell Garden um, later on, I guess, how long is the Pinwell Garden going to stay up for? The pin all throughout the month of April. So even if you're unable to uh, participate with us on tomorrow, please come by and see our pinwheel. And then there'll also be resources and information that we will have to provide. 
Great. Well, darling, thank you so much. And thank you for making time um, for the viewers of Wavy, you know, to talk about this event and, and what's happening for the month of April and whether or not they can get out there, you know, t tomorrow or for the month. You know, hopefully this will be on their mind, you know, throughout this month, but then throughout the year and sort of take these resources and, and tips with them. But thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.